Hello friends, welcome to Code Sutra. Even before diving into the problem, I want to tell you something that problem solving is not the only necessary thing when it comes to DSA. It is also important that you understand the pattern behind this problem. For example, if you understand the pattern behind this problem, straight away you will be able to solve 8 to 10 problems in lead code. Not only on lead code, this is one of the commonly asked pattern in interviews as well as online assessments. So at the end of the video, I will be telling about different patterns that you can encounter in binary search mm -hmm. having said that and also i have an important announcement at the end of the video do stay till the end of the video now let's dive into the problem in this problem we are given a distance array for example 1 3 2 these are the distances and we are given in half what does this mean this means you have to cover all these distances in this hour and you have to find what is the minimum speed you require to do this for example Say you are going at a speed of 3. Now, what will be the time that we require to cover a distance of 1? So, we will be required 0.33. That is 1 by 3. So, just in order to cover this distance, we require 0.33. But it is given in the problem that you should wait for the next train. You should wait 1 hour for the next train. That is, you cannot go at a decimal point you have to wait for the next hour or we have to take the ceiling of that hour though we are able to come at point 0.33 we have to wait till the completion of the first hour so the first train will take one hour similarly the second train will take one hour why because it is three by three this will take complete one hour so there is no modification in this and the last train there is a difference for last train that is two by three which is equal to 0.67 so the total time taken is 2.67. We need not take the ceiling for the last digit because we have already arrived, right? So we will be taking 2.67 hertz if we are traveling at a speed of 3. So will we be able to reach before the 6th hour? Yes, we will be able to reach before the 6th hour. Now it is asked in the problem, what is the minimum speed you require to reach the office through all these distances in this given hour. For example, let's take the speed as 1. Now, if we take the speed as 1, to complete the first, it will be 1 and 3 and 2. Will we be able, that is equal to 6? Yes, we are going to office exactly on time. So, our minimum speed that is required is equal to 1 in this case. So, this will be our answer. Let's take one more example. It's the same example, but what is the minimum required? We just saw it in... Uh, at a speed of 3, we will be requiring 2.67 hours, which is less than 2.7. So, that will be our answer. If we check for 2, let's try it and check for 2. 1 by 2, the ceiling of 1 by 2, plus the ceiling of 3 by 2, plus the ceiling of 2 by 2, which is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 1 which is actually greater than 2.7. So we will not be able to do at a speed of 2. So our answer in this case is equal to 3, which we did in the previous case. Now, what is the brute force approach that we have? The brute force approach that we have is, we will start the speed from speed is equal to 1 and go until say 10 in this case. I have taken just 10 in this case. But the problem constraint is that it can go up to 10 power 7. But let's just assume since this is a small problem, the speed is 1 to 10. What we will do is, we will check all the values. Will this be possible in speed equals 1? Let's find it out. Let's for now assume that there is a magic function, check function, which says if you give it a particular speed, it says yes or no. You can go in this or not. For example, let's take speed equal to 1. Will we be able to go? No. So for 1, it said no. Similarly, for 2, will we be able to go? It said no. Now, for 3, will we be able to go? It said yes, we'll be able to go. Now, which is the first digit that we are able to do? First integer, 3. So 3 will be our answer. So this is a small example, but if you look at a larger example, where the answer lies at say 500. You have to go from 1, 2, 3 until 500 to find the answer. Now, is there a better approach to do this? Let's find it out. For example, if we are said that, if we are said that, let's pick up a random number. How do we pick up a random number? I will come to that. Let's pick up a random number. 
say we picked up four we picked up four and we realize that we will not be able to do with four the speed four now if you are not able to do at a speed of four what are the chances we will be able to do at the speed of one two three we will not be able to never do at the speed of one two three so we can eliminate this space that is one thing now let's take another example if it says yes you are able to do now should you even consider six seven eight nine no right why because if you are able to do at the speed of four in this problem it is as the minimum speed if you are able to do at speed four only will you be able to do at six seven eight nine yes right so what is we can eliminate this space also but this will be our answer right now this approach that we are picking instead of picking a random number we will pick up the middle number and this is called as binary search for example let's take the range to be 0 and 10 for this small number what is l l is equal to 0 r will be equal to 10 r min in the first case will be equal to 5 will be able to do at a speed of 5 will we be able to reach before 3 hours i will come to that chunk function but it will be a s in this case so if we are able to do at 5 speed now let's write write the range 3 4 5 6 7 8 can we eliminate all this our new answer will be 5 our new answer will be 5 but if since we are able to do at 5 itself we can eliminate 6 7 8 9 and 10 so our new l will be equal to 0 and our r will be equal to 5 and our answer is equal to 5 in this case now what is our new mid our new mid will be equal to 2 will we be able to do it in 2 no right we will not be able to so it says 2 no so there is no need to check for 1 and there is no need to check for 2 again. 1 and 2 are eliminated. Now 3 and 5 is our new range. What is the new mid? 4. And will we be able? Yes, we will be able. So 4 will be our new answer. It's a dry run of the problem that I am doing. So once we are able to do at 4, there is no need to check for 5. Right? Now our range will get reduced to 3 and 4. And our new mid will be 3. And that will be our answer. And finally it's 3 comma 3 where we'll actually be stopping and our answer is updated to 3. Now instead of checking all the 10 digits, we were able to just do it in 4 to 5 iterations, 4 to 5 iterations. This might not look a huge deal for this problem, but if you look at very large problem, in this problem it is given that the range is from 0 to 10 to the power of 7, 0 to 10 to the power of 7. So if the value is at somewhere between say 15 to 10 to the power, 5 into 10 power 6, or 10 to the power of 5. The thing is we have to check all the values but if you do in this approach the time taken will be log n, log n to check the values. Now let's uh, come to the pseudocode. Let's still assume that there is a magical check function which says yes or no. It will take the speed as the input. This will be the speed and it will say yes or no. The thing is if it says yes we can update our answer and we can eliminate all the things on right. For example, if the answer is 5, we can eliminate 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Similarly, if it, that is not the answer, we can eliminate including that all the things that are on the left. Finally, we will be returning the answer. Now, let's come to the check function. What this check function has to do, it has to go through all the distances. For example, 1, 3, 2. It will go through all the distances and compute how much time is required just for this distance. If you see here, I am taking the ceiling of everything until this, until the last element. Why? For the last element, you don't have to take the ceiling. We just have to take 2 by 3 itself. Why? Because it is when you reach the office, you do need not wait when you reach the office. So on, except for the last, the logic for everything is same. Finally, we will check if the time required is less than the time mentioned in the problem. If it is yes, we will return true. If it is no, we will return false. This is the check function. Now let's come to the similar problem and the pattern that we use. The pattern that we use here is called as binary search with answer space. With answer space. This is one of the patterns in binary search. There are two more patterns. So one is we will just be given an array and in the array there will be modification. Suppose the array is sorted. It is a different kind of array, but we are directly asked to find a target. This is the first pattern. This is the second pattern that we can encounter in binary search. The third pattern is optimization pattern, where you will not even realize that you have to use binary search. But once you solve it using brute force and then you go on, 
after that we will realize yes this can also be done with binary search so these are the very three important patterns that are frequently asked in interviews also and these are few similar problems that frequently comes up in interview and we are discussing these problems in a telegram group so do consider joining the telegram group and on top of that we discussed all these problems in a recent workshop that we concluded we discussed all the three binary search patterns and we took a few example medium and hard level problems on lead code and we solved that and we are conducting a workshop on this saturday on this topic of linked list so if you are someone who is interested in this do consider registering for the workshop which will be for three straight hours and it's a free workshop do register for the workshop and thank you for watching the video please do like share and subscribe